From the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hello, everybody, and welcome to this week's Wikibon Cube Insights, powered by ETR. In this breaking analysis, we want to update you on the latest spending data from ETR. As you know, we've been tracking this weekly. Sagar Kadaki is here. He's the Director of Research at ETR. Sagar, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me again, Dave. Really appreciate it. Yeah, so, so let me remind everybody. So we entered the, the year this year, uh, 2020, with a consensus IT spend forecast of plus 4%. Once coronavirus hit, ETR launched its latest survey in March, and we saw those numbers you know, come down. Last week we reported, well, the first uh, report we made was, it looked like it was flat. Last week we reported a slight negative, and today we want to update you guys on those numbers. So Saga, before we get into the data, just give us the high level on where mm -hmm. you guys are at in terms of your survey. Yeah, no problem. So currently we are forecasting a decline in, in, in global IT budgets about negative 4%. Uh, I think what's happened you know, over the last you know, 10 or 15 days is you've just seen more and more information released uh, that's given organizations more of an understanding of, of just how severe uh, this you know, epidemic is. And, and so what we've been able to do on our end is kind of do an uh, event study analysis or a simulation analysis, kind of what you're seeing here to really pinpoint uh, the time period where organizations understood the severity of the epidemic and then really trying to uh, measure the declines uh, in IT budgets from there. Great, so guys, bring that slide back up. I want to share with our audience what's happening here. So what ETR has done is an event-based analysis. And mm -hmm. what you can see is where the survey launched on 311, you could see how sentiment has declined literally daily as the data rolled in. Then you see the US declared a national emergency. You saw the, the federal plan leaked for that you know, pan pandemic project projection. And then obviously New York became a hotspot. And then you can see the, the stimulus package in it. And Sagar, it looks like there's a slight uptick here, but generally speaking, it's down. Now mm -hmm. it could be worse, but you guys were the first to report the offset from work, work from home infrastructure. We'll talk about that a little bit, but talk about this event analysis and what you're seeing here and how you compressed the analysis post mm -hmm. these events. No problem. So uh, let's start with the blue line here. And, and just so the audience knows, uh, the X axis is going to be date and the Y axis is going to be uh, annual growth or decline uh, in, in IT budgets. Um, what you're seeing here, and if we start with the blue line is we started polling on 311. And on that date, we started to ask you know, Fortune 100s, Fortune 500s, how their budget was going to change uh, based on the impacts of COVID-19 versus their original expectations coming into, uh, coming into the year. And again, consensus estimates coming to the year were uh, a positive 4%. So if you track that line all the way through, uh, you get to a decline of about 1%. Now, what's the issue of, of starting polling on 311 or using that blue line? Well, one of the big issues is a few days later, uh, the US declared a national emergency, so more information was released. Right? I think organizations that took the survey in the first few days didn't have a complete picture as to what's going on. And then effectively, uh, a week later, um, you saw federal documents get leaked stating how bad this epidemic was, right? in terms of it could last 18, 18 plus months. And so what we did was we did effectively uh, an event-based analysis or diffuse, different simulation where if you take a look at the yellow and red lines to start, what we're doing is we're effectively saying, okay, Let's ignore everyone that took the survey prior to that. Let's take their budgets in terms of how they indicated change versus their original expectations uh, for 2020. And then let's go ahead and map that. And if you look at uh, the yellow line as an example, that goes to a decline of 2%. And then once I think uh, you know, the next shoe dropped in terms of organizations understanding this is not going to be a, uh, a few weeks or this is not the common cold or flu, once organizations knew this was going to be an 18 plus epidemic, uh, you can see if we started pulling respondents from there, how much more negative it gets. And of course, once NYC became the epicenter, you saw a little another shoe drop. So right now, those, those scenarios or simulations are taking us between uh, a decline of, of three and 4%. And then of course, if we look at that last purple line there, um, when the stimulus got announced, uh, what we are seeing is it looks like it may have bottomed out. Um, we have to continue tracking it because, you know, again, it's just a few days uh, since the stimulus is, it was passed. And so 
Uh, let's see if the data starts to improve a little bit or at least stabilize. But I think from the last three events, in terms of the, the federal plan being leaked, um, NYC becoming the epicenter and the stimulus, it looks like the market now is fully aware of what's going on. Uh, and now we're kind of seeing some stabilization in the data in terms of the declines for 2020. So between the Fed's action and the, the, the fiscal stimulus, we've, we've seen some optimism, although people are really mm -hmm. cautious, of, of course. Remember folks, yeah. this would be worse were it not for the shift in spend to work from home infrastructure, not just collaboration and visualization tools, but other infrastructure around that, network bandwidth, security, mm -hmm. uh, desktop virtualization, et cetera. So guys, if you bring up the next chart, I want to set this up. We've been reporting this framework for a while now. What this shows is what the sentiment is in terms of the budget change. And you can see the gray uh, bar now is 35%. It started at 40%, so that's dropped. So the, the percentage of CIO saying no change. The green is held pretty steady at around 20 to 22%. It's, it's roughly in there and the red you know, has, been, has been shifting. And you can see most of the green, i.e. spending more in 2020 is, is focused on that you know, one to, to, to 10%. Uh, but but Sagar, bring us up to date now. We're we're going to settle in at right now about three and a half to four percent on the negative side. Mm -hmm. Give us some color on this chart, please. Yeah, no problem. So, th the best way to connect this chart with what we saw earlier is this is a snapshot. So this is a single day. So this is the data that is feeding the time series chart to kind of help the audience understand what's going on. So if we were to look at this exact chart um, oh, since March 11th you would see that midpoint average effectively coming down every day. And that's effectively what's making up that time series. Um, in terms of this chart, uh, you know, Dave, you kind of hit it right on the nail. You're kind of seeing the positivity remain or, or be stable. And again, that's that work from home infrastructure, as you, as you mentioned, right? The collaboration tools, you know, uh, the, the virtualization, IT support services, networking bandwidth, all that stuff, right? Being more and more security. But on the negative side, I think what you're seeing is that, again, as organizations now understand the severity of the epidemic, I think as we understand further, and we talked about this you know, a few weeks ago, uh, that organizations were anticipating less demand, they were anticipating um, an uptick in broken supply chains. Now you're starting to see some of that play out. And as a result, you're seeing organizations get more and more negative. And that's why that midpoint average, it keeps declining. That's why those red bars keep going up is, the, the impacts in, in, you know, based on the data are, are now starting to be, to be seen. And so uh, you know, let's see if the stimulus stabilizes this data um, and we'll continue tracking that you know, over the next few weeks, the next few months. Okay, uh, so basically we're coming in minus three and a half to 4%. That's where we are uh, today. We're not going to get detailed into some of the vendors today. We talked a little bit about that last week and go back to last week's breaking analysis. You can see some of that vendor commentary. I want to talk about what happens next. ETR now will go into a two week quiet, self-imposed quiet period and really start crunching the data. At the end of that quiet period, they will release to their private clients the, their latest thinking in, in a webcast. After that time, we at theCUBE are allowed to share public information and we're going to drill down into some of the segments that our community is most interested in, but, but, but ETR is going quiet now. So Saga, maybe you can explain that sequence mm -hmm. and fill in any holes that I missed there. Yeah, no problem. Uh, the next two weeks, you know, we've, we've collected a tremendous amount of data. Um, you know, we're over, you know, we're at hundred Fortune 100 organizations, you know, uh, almost three, 400 Global 2000 organizations. And so we're at a point now where uh, it's time to um, start aggregating the data, start really analyzing it, going through this COVID drill down that we conducted, but also we, we conducted a, a tremendous uh, study on technology spending intentions across you know, over 350 vendors, dozens of technology sectors. And so now it's really a time to, to kind of drill in. And you know, what, what we're looking for, or even some of the biggest takeaways from, from this COVID you know, drill down is, you know, if, if you started polling before 323, chances are your forecast is going to come in light. And I think that's one of the things that we've learned as we're kind of going into this two week period is we really want to measure the impact starting right around that 323 timeframe. It looks right around then based on that time series chart that we showed earlier. That's when the market fully understood the impact of this epidemic. And so as we start over the next two weeks, 
uh, even though we started pulling a little bit early, we really want to focus on that second set, second half of responses because that's probably going to be more uh, indicative of, of of what's going on. Uh, I think the second thing is going to be, um, look, if if, condi if if conditions continue to deteriorate, um, things can get worse, and so we may come out of the next two weeks with this data that we collected, and again have to continue uh, indicating that uh, you know the environment has continued coming down and you know may, we may have to make adjustments as as we see fit so i think that's kind of you know this whole situation is so dynamic still um and so we're going to do our best uh in the next week and a half to kind of get this data uh to market to at least give everyone an idea here's how everything stands right now and so that people have a good benchmark um to then move forward yeah so this is as close to real time really as you can get in sort of this IT spending world Saga mentioned some of the numbers in the in the global 2000 and the fortune fortune 100, fortune 1000 this this end now just a reminder is up over 1200 i believe right Saga, the total end that you've collected this this that, month that's correct exactly every time we've been doing one of these it's been going up another couple hundred respondents so yeah we're we're at a very comfortable level now uh, our sample right now represents 555 billion dollars uh, in annual IT spend, um, you know, and, and global IT spend every year is a little over, you know, three trillion. So this is a significant, significant portion um, of, of global IT spend, and we feel comfortable at this point, kind of going into that quiet period, as you mentioned, and really starting to dig through the results. That, you know, now that we've kind of, you know, uh, covered the 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 ten thousand foot or the macro layer, so to speak, in terms of where budgets are going, now it's really time to start drilling down into the sectors and vendors, because uh, this is this is not going to be uh, every vendor is going down or whatever it may be. There's so many different dynamics here. Some vendors are going to do very well because of the work from home infrastructure. And I think some vendors are going to do very poorly because one, they're not only on the legacy side, but they're not really aligned from uh, this whole work from home infrastructure movement. So you're going to see a lot of bifurcation, uh, you know, as we get into Q2, Q3. That's right. And we're going to dig into all those segments. We're going to look at the work from home. We're going to look at the traditional stuff. We're going to look at cloud. We're going to drill into specific segments that are that are of interest to our community. It's a pleasure to really have you on here, Saga. Thank you for, for sharing, giving us access to this data and, uh, and stay safe. And we will be watching. Go to etr.plus and you know, check out what's happening there. SiliconAngle.com will obviously cover this and I publish weekly on wikibon.com. Again, th Saga, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Yeah, no problem. Thank you so much and uh, looking forward to catching up in a few weeks. All right, then thank you for watching everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE for Wikibon's Cube Insights powered by ETR. We'll see you next time.